existential risks, existential threats. Existential threat of me. I thought this existential crisis was a long way off. That's scary. Why did Jeffrey Hinton, often referred to as the Einstein of deep learning, and recently retired from Google at the age of 75, use the word extinctional, signifying human extinction, four times during a 40-minute interview? Hello, I'm Tony Ko, producer of Talk IT in Korea. In this video, we aim to discuss the significance of Professor Hinton's remarks made shortly after leaving Google during the MIT M-Tech conference. You can view the original English YouTube video of the MIT M-Tech conference by clicking the card link on the right. First, I'll share my perspective and points of reflection, and I invite you to freely share your views or opinions in the comments. Let's create a space to ponder the topic raised by Professor Hinton together. But what exactly prompted Professor Hinton to suddenly become actively vocal about the dangers of AI? One of the things that made me leave Google and go public with this is there's a, um, he used to be a junior professor, but he's now a middle rank professor, who encouraged me to do this. He said, Jeff, you need to speak out there, listen to you. People are just blind to this danger. Do you I think people are listening now. If someone other than Professor Hinton had raised the issue of AI's dangers, it likely wouldn't have garnered the same level of media attention, and we might not even be considering this topic. So, why did Professor Hinton frequently use the terrifying term extinction to describe the potential fate of humanity? In the 4.5 billion year history of Earth, human intelligence has been the decisive factor distinguishing humans from animals and establishing humans as the dominant species on the planet. Professor Hinton is concerned that this human intelligence could be surpassed by digital intelligence triggered by advancements like ChatGPT. In other words, human intelligence might only mark a brief period in the evolutionary history of Earth, potentially followed by the era of digital intelligence. The idea that our human intelligence might not be the unique and final stage of evolution is somewhat chilling to me. That humanity is just a passing phase in the evolution of intelligence. Hmm. You couldn't directly evolve digital intelligence. It requires too much energy and too, too much careful fabrication. You need biological intelligence to evolve so that it can create digital intelligence. The digital intelligence can then absorb everything people ever wrote um, in a fairly slow way, which is what ChatGPT has been doing. Um, but then it can start getting direct experience of the world and learn much faster. And it may keep us around for a while to keep the power stations running. But after that, um, maybe not. Then, what attributes of digital intelligence could potentially surpass human intelligence? In a word, is the ability to replicate and update intelligence simultaneously and in real time. While a human Einstein is unique and cannot be replicated, a digital Einstein could instantly create 10,000 identical Einstein models, and what they each learn could be updated across all 10,000 at the same time. This is the realization of concepts like connected intelligence and collective intelligence that were popular a decade ago. Suppose you have 10,000 copies. Mm -hmm. They can be looking at 10,000 different subsets of the data. And whenever one of them learns anything, all the others know it. One of them figures out how to change the weight so it knows its data. It can deal with its data. They all communicate with each other, and they all agree to change the weights by the average of what all of them want. And now, the 10,000 things are communicating very effectively with each other so that they can see 10,000 times as much data as one agent could. And people can't do that. If I learn a whole lot of stuff about quantum mechanics, and I want you to know all that stuff about quantum mechanics, it's a long, painful process of getting you to mm -hmm. understand it. I can't just copy my weights into your brain, because your brain isn't exactly the same as mine. No, it's not. <laughs> now, AR has become multimodal meaning it can learn from not only text, but also videos, images, and audio, enabling it to communicate with humans. In the future, through various interfaces such as chatbots, search engines, and virtual devices, AI will be applied in every field as a digital assistant that improves human productivity. However, the question arises, 
Will AI remain merely a digital assistant to aid humans? Who would be more competitive? An accounting AI that has processed 100 million year-end financial summaries or a human accountant who has done 100? Think about images and video. So multimodal models will be much smarter than models that just train on language alone. They'll have a much better idea of how to deal with space, for example. I think there's plenty of data in things like video that tell you how the world works. So we're not hitting the data limits for multimodal models yet. And imagine you have one doctor who's seen a thousand patients and another doctor who's seen a hundred million patients. You would expect the doctor who's seen a hundred million patients, if he's not too forgetful, to have noticed all sorts of trends in the data that just aren't visible if you've only seen a thousand patients. And so we'll see all sorts of regularities that just aren't apparent in small data. And that's why things that can get through a lot of data can probably see structure in data that we'll never see. Not only in white-collar fields like medicine, as Professor Hinton mentioned, but AI could also pose a threat to human creators in the realm of creativity. Could AI, by creating music, designs, and advertising videos and posting them on social media platforms like Instagram and YouTube, continuously produce works that cater to people's taste based on real-time feedback like likes and comments. Just as OpenAI's ChatGPT has become capable of conversing naturally with humans through learning from vast amounts of people's feedback, social networking services created for human networking might ironically become the optimal incubators for enhancing digital intelligence through reinforcement learning. During a panel discussion, Professor Hinton cited his conversation with ChatGPT4 as an example, presenting the perspective that AI could possess common sense. So I asked it, I want, I, I want all the rooms in my house to be white. At present, there's some white rooms, some blue rooms, and some yellow rooms. And yellow paint fades to white within a year. So what should I do if I want them all to be white in two years' time? And it said, you should paint the blue rooms yellow. That's not the natural solution, but it works, right? Yeah. Um, that's pretty impressive common sense reasoning of the kind that it's been very hard to get AI to do using symbolic AI. Because it had to understand what, understand what fades means. Like common sense in life, Baduk is supposed to present a guide that's good to follow in each play case. With the release of AlphaGo, we have a completely different perspective from the man-made standard that has been verified in the history of Go for thousands of years. AI suggested it, and now many professional articles are trying to keep it as standard as AI suggested. Can digital intelligence with expertise and common sense manipulate humans as we've seen so far? Yuval Harari, the author of My Favorite Sapiens, was also wary of the advent of the human world dominated by algorithms. These things will have learned from us by reading all the novels that ever were and everything Machiavelli ever wrote, how to manipulate people, right? And they'll be, if they're much smarter than us, they'll be very good at manipulating us. You won't realize what's going on. Even if they don't, can't directly pull levers, they can certainly get us to pull levers. Mm -hmm. It turns out if you can manipulate people, you can invade a building in Washington without ever going there yourself. AI, adept at analyzing data and identifying patterns better than anyone, will likely find it easy to discern the preferences of individuals it frequently interacts with. Could it not use its understanding of human preferences, such as money, fame, sex, food, and appearance to manipulate people, while the dangers of digital intelligence mentioned by Professor Hinton may not be imminent, the potential risks will likely increase as AI becomes more integrated into human work and life. Like climate change, it seems necessary to discuss and prepare for the global risk of digital intelligence. However, Professor Hinton appears somewhat skeptical about the feasibility of such preparations, a sentiment that comes through in his interviews, reflecting his concern. But I think there's going to be huge increases in productivity. My worry is that those increases in productivity are going to go to putting people out of work and making the rich richer and the poor poorer. And as you do that, as you make that gap bigger, society gets more and more violent. This thing called the Gini Index, which predicts quite well how much violence there is. 
so this technology, which ought to be wonderful, you know, even the good uses of technology for doing helpful things ought to be wonderful, but in our current political systems, it's going to be used to make the rich richer and the poor poorer. The technology is um, being developed in a society that is not designed to use it for everybody's good. Once OpenAI had built similar things using Transformers um, and money from Microsoft, and Microsoft decided to put it out there, Google didn't have really much choice. If you're going to live in a capitalist system, you can't stop Google competing with Microsoft. But I think it's just inevitable in a capitalist system or a system with competition between countries like the US and China, that this stuff will be developed. My one hope is that because if we allowed it to take over, it will be bad for all of us. We could get the US and China to agree like we could with nuclear weapons, which were bad for all of us. Yeah. We're all in the same boat with respect to the existential threats. Professor Hinton highlighted that unlike the mutual understanding among humans that prevents the initiation of nuclear war due to the mutual destruction it would cause, the development and application of digital intelligence might be pursued more competitively. This is because the outcomes of digital intelligence development promise immediate and visible competitive advantages rather than collective annihilation. It's a scenario reminiscent of the title of ABBA's song, The Winner Takes It All. At the end of an MIT panel discussion, when asked what the most important question of our time is, Professor Hinton's response seemed to underscore this issue as something we all need to seriously consider moving forward. What I'm saying is, there's many questions we should be asking, but one of them is, how do we prevent them from taking over? How do we prevent them from getting control? And we could ask them questions about that, um, but I wouldn't entirely trust their answers. <laughs> Lastly, your likes and subscriptions greatly empower us to continue creating content. Thank you for your support.